Hey, what's going on everybody? Joe Menza here. Welcome to another painting video. In this one here, I thought I'd do a little something different. We're going to try painting a rock wall without doing any scraping. And now in the past, I've done a lot of scraping when it comes to rocky type things, walls, bridges, things like that. And this one here, we're going to do things a little bit differently, but we're still going to keep it fast and loose. Now I've already applied my three layers of water and a little bit of yellow ochre and I've kept the bottom area kind of dry. I've only wetted down the top three quarters of the paper. And now I'm taking a little ultramarine blue. We just kind of want a little bit of a cloudy backdrop. Maybe kind of take you back into the picture. Now the main purpose of doing this is to do this wall that I'm going, I'm, I'm planning on in my head. If you're new to my channel, uh, this channel sort of catalogs my journey. I've been painting for almost three years now. Um, by no means an expert, by no means an actual teacher. Uh, but I thought I'd share as I went along in my journey as far as what I've learned and what I'm doing now along the way and my progress. And it's a good way to get over, uh, you know, your fear of maybe sharing things, um, you know, showing other people your work. And that kind of thing I think it's good if you have like an Instagram you post all the paintings you do and you kind of see how the feedback is and it becomes sort of a little hobby unto itself okay so in this one here now the paints kind of run down a little bit I think I'm gonna do some clouds in the background we'll kind of re-wet this down a little bit so let's take uh, our brush I'm using what's called a large, if you're new to my, my videos, this is called a large, technically it's called a hake brush, but you'll hear people call it hake. Uh, it's a large brush with goat hair on there, and the reason you use it is because you can cover large areas without using tiny brushes and not do a lot of fiddling and a lot of detail work. And that's what keeps paintings fresh, spontaneous, and fun is not getting meticulous into tiny, tiny details. So what I'm doing now is I'm just re-wetting this down with just some water. It's not quite really what I wanted. And this is something you can do too if you look at something and you wanna kinda reuse your paper, you can do this. I'm using now some ultramarine blue and a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm just gonna create a little more of a solid sky Notice a little hair there came off the brush. That happens sometimes. Don't spend a lot of time chasing those down. They'll wipe off once the painting dries. They have a weird habit, though, of getting right into the focal point for some reason. Okay, so I'm just taking a wet hake brush here and my wet end of my brush, and I'm just removing some of the blue paint. Now, being that this is wet, you'll notice some of this is going to run down, and you have to do this more than once if you're going to do sort of this reverse cloud painting. You'll just notice some of that running down. Now, the bottom, I'm taking some yellow ochre, and I'm just kind of washing that first wash for the, for the bottom area. Taking my hake brush again, and just redoing some of those areas to open it up for the clouds. It's an easy way to make clouds without actually really painting. Again, the goal of this is to have fun, enjoy what you're doing, do things quickly, not spend days and hours on one painting. We live in this fast-paced world, so a lot of people don't have time to spend on just one painting. But if you do, nothing wrong with that either. Now I'm taking some Payne's Gray, more stronger Payne's Gray mixed with a little blue. And I'm just sort of defining the bottom of the cloud. You know when you look at a cloud and the underside of it's kind of gray and the tops are white. I'm taking a fine nylon brush here and just kind of blending things. It looked a little too blotchy. And you can do all this while this is still wet. Once it dries, you're going to start kind of causing problems. So just doing the underside here. And remember, this stuff's going to dry back a little bit. A 
Okay, so I'm going to put a pretty good size bush, tree-ish bush, tree-ish bush. It's a good term to the left. And I'm hitting it with some yellow ochre, maybe a little ultramarine blue. I'm basically just was mashing the ends of the brush in just to get some foundation for that in. Now I'm taking a little burnt umber with a little bit of yellow ochre. This is going to be the basis for the wall. Leaving a little bit of white if I can. Just hoping for some random things. And I'm going back to the bush now with more ultramarine with the yellow. And just mashing in the tips of the brush. Just trying to create shapes. A little stronger now. The bushish tree, the treeish bush. Now we'll put a little bit of something in this corner here too. With that darker color as this will be a little bit closer. And again, a little bit darker into that, uh, the tree-ish bush. Now I'm just kind of playing. I'm just making some lines into this wall. Um, I don't think it end up really having a, having an impact in the end product. But sometimes you just sort of experiment with things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make some, I'm just going to poke some color in randomly around what will be the wall. This will make sense shortly. A little bit of spray to keep it wet. And a little bit of just defining the wall. With a little bit of burnt umber. So you can see the shape. You can see where I'm going with this. Some of this is a little hit or miss, but I'm just kind of taking out a little bit of color. I just really want some randomness where the, the stones are going to be. Um, you can do this in the end. I can say my finished product. I, I didn't like where this was going. And I figured I'd leave it in so you can see. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if I can experiment with things and you can see how it goes... Well, and maybe it saves you a little bit of experimentation, too. So just some darker things. See, you could put some lines in. And you could make some, you can make it straight bricks. Where I'm ultimately going to go is I'm going to make some oddball shaped bricks. I think that'll look better. So again, I'm just randomly spotting in some colors here. This, again, will make sense soon. Because I do have an idea in my head of how I want it to look. You're looking at this now and you're saying, well, that doesn't look like anything. <clears throat> really what I'm going for is just randomness. Because stone, bricks, etc., there will be slightly different shades throughout. And originally I was thinking, well, I could reverse paint in some bricks. I wanted to come up with sort of a method that would be make it a little more streamlined. Take a little bit of color out with the tissue. It could pass now for a bit of a structure. 
I'm just going to let that dry a bit, and I'm going to put in maybe like a little bit of a road down at the bottom here. Just a little bit of a path, a little bit of a road as you pass this wall. A little bit of light red, a little burn umber. You could probably do a little bit of dry brushing on that wall and it would look halfway decent. Put a little bit of foliage back here a little bit too. Just sort of in the distance. and just some random foliage along the wall and along the path. And as my brush is getting drier, I like to tap in a little bit at the top of the, like trees and bushes, and it creates a, just a very raggedy, almost realistic effect. It helps too if you have a paper, this is Fabriano 140 pound, uh, 11 by 14. I find that the grain can work for you in many cases for dry brushing, uh, especially. Now I'm adding some yellow ochre, some ultramarine blue, and again a little dry, just trying to get that feathered dry brush look. And just a little bit at the base of some of this background foliage. Just checking to see if that wall is dry. Okay, so now I am taking a number two rigger brush. And what I'm doing here is, and I see this could be a little bit of a problem now because I'm right-handed and I've got this camera on the right side. But what I'm doing here is I'm kind of drawing lines of the shapes of stones around where the different colors are. And this will define the stones. This was the idea that I had in my head. And so I'm glad I filmed it to see how this actually came out. So I'm just kind of drawing around where maybe each area of color is. And then I'll make each like defining stone. Now this isn't so much fast and loose, but it is sort of loose. I mean, it's a little bit of detail, but it's so randomly being done that I'm not really specifically picking out details necessarily. I'm just sort of finding where maybe a color border ends. And I think you see now where I'm going with this. There's probably a bunch of other ways you could get to this point. This is something I just thought I'd try and share. I know some people use saran wrap to create textures and they use salt. So there's, there's a lot of ways you can go about doing this. Personally, I like to just scrape rocks out with a credit card. I think that's the most fun. But in this case here, I wanted to see um, just, to, just to actually sit down and paint something. I suppose you could do the same thing with a pile of rocks. And you could probably make these straight too. You could use almost like a ruler or something and you can go straight across and make them more like even bricks. Now the problem here now is that if you're going for some realism, these lines are almost too neat. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm taking 
the dry brush and I'm running it along the lines, especially toward the bottom, and taking advantage of the texture of the paper. And it'll create some different shades and some different random, let's say pixels, if we were looking like at a TV screen. It's almost like pixelated. That's what I see dry brush as. And you can see that's what I'm doing now. I'm using the side of the rigger. Just dry brushing in some different tones. You can go as far as you want to with this. You could stop right here and you'd probably be fine. As long as it doesn't get tedious or as if you're into, you know, you're, you start to fuss with things, trying to get things exactly precisely right. That's where you cross over from fast and loose into doing, you know, meticulous detail. I don't think we're quite there yet. So now I'm taking a little bit of burn umber with Payne's Gray and I put a little bit on a toothbrush and I'm just flicking on some specks onto the, onto the wall just to create again some more randomness. Just defining some of those stones a little bit more, creating some darker shadows underneath. I think it's not bad. I, I think it's pretty good. I had this just uh, thought in my head of how to do this. I've never actually done this before. Now dry brushing. I take that back. I did it on. I did one called a stone bridge, and I did something similar to this, but I didn't paint out the borders around the stones. It's making that top a little bit more defined. And now just putting in a little more of the, the foliage there along the path and along the bottom of the wall just so it looks like there's a little bit of growth there. And a little darker on all the other larger objects as that's now dried back. Again, using the advantage of the dry hake bristles. I like the way the hake leaves like little dots. It's just like random trees, uh, random like little leaves above trees and things. Only brush I've found that really does that. Taking a little cad yellow and a little uh, yellow ochre to make some highlights on this tree. By the way, I'm using Cotman colors, which are hues, so it's not actual cad yellow, but it's a cad yellow hue. And 
Now that, le that tree in the back, it has a little highlight color on it. Looks like it's pretty dry now. I'm gonna flick a little bit of my toothbrush with some clean water on it. See if I can't create some little white specks in there. Might not be quite dry enough yet at this point. Um, use a tissue, just quick little swipes across will wipe off the little droplets and you'll create some neat effects with that too and I'm just going to redefine some of these stones here I lost a little bit doing that I think that wall looks pretty good and somewhat realistic, maybe a little tad cartoonish, I guess. I try to get things a little more realistic, but a lot of times when you make man-made things in watercolor, they a lot of times look have a cartoonish look to them. It's just the way it is. It's the way it is in a lot of paintings, unless you're doing like ultra realism, which I'm a fan of looking at, but I'm not a fan of trying to paint. But a lot of times in my mind, that's how I like want it to look. I think that's why we fuss with paintings because we're always shooting for like a realism or, or something we're trying to get something exact. And really it should be more impressionistic. And it's a combination of that. I'm just gonna create some sort of tree coming up here. I'm gonna take advantage of that light in the sky. And for some reason, when I end up making like these little twiggy, sticky trees, they get bigger and bigger. I'm never happy with them until they look like a bigger tree. It's a weird quirk that I have, I think. Again, number two, rigor. Little burnt umber, little Payne's gray, little ultramarine blue. Just gonna make some little sticks sticking out of the other trees too. And that tree in the middle there, I'm kind of using that to cover. The end of the wall kind of looks a little odd. So the having the tree there is kind of take away from that break there. And a few little sticks coming out of the top of our bushish tree or treeish bush. And I'm plugging in the trusty old hair dryer. And we'll do a quick dry. This thing needs to dry now at this point. Give the uh, rock wall thing a try. I think y y you can probably do better, I'm sure. And I've given you sort of an idea on how I did it here. The next time I think I'll probably improve upon it, but I think you can see the, the basic idea for it and I'm sure you can do very well. Maybe try some different colors, get some little reddish hues, you know, get some different browns in there and um, you can really create a variety. You can make the, the the bricks really look maybe more toward the center. There's something going on. You can almost make it look three-dimensional. Quick dry. I want to get this really dry, so if I flick any more droplets on it, it's, it's really dry. We're getting close to the end now here, though, so I think we've done all that we can do. I really like the tree-ish bush. <laughs> and I'm just going to, again, flick a little clean water with the toothbrush. 
Just some quick swipes. Just trying to get some little droplets. Just some little white spots. Kind of break up some little things. I'm going to put some on the tree, the tree-ish bush too. It's a good thing I do to just break up solid areas sometimes that look a little too solid. can overdo it which I tend to do got to show some restraint and I've done a little wipe in the middle of the tree as opposed to my usual I do a little scraping I wanted to specifically make this a scraping free video just to show there's other ways to skin a cat so to speak so this is about it I thank everybody for watching and following me along on my little watercolor journey here I hope you're enjoying these videos and that you're you've come to painting maybe this is your first time you say you know i'm watching this i can do this I, you can do it um this is a fun thing to do it's a good way to turn off the tv turn off the computer just do something manual by hand have a good time release some stress have fun and just enjoy what you're doing don't stress move on to the next painting and just keep improving keep having fun save those old paintings and monitor your progress and hopefully you're having fun so here is the final painting here and i've got it in the black mat and let's zoom in look at our clouds i think they look pretty nice and our tree we've got some nice little highlights and details and there's our wall and you know, from a distance, it looks a little more realistic, but I just want to show you close up how that came out. And I added a figure here when the camera wasn't rolling, just to look like somebody's sort of down the path over there, a little bit of a focal point. But that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please comment and subscribe and make yourself a wonderful day.